senior master of ceremonies, Ted Lester. Hey, how's everybody doing today? And how about the rest of you? Are you all right, too? Okay. And we got such a low-budget show, I had to introduce myself back there. But I uh, want to thank you so much for coming to see our show, the Savannah USO Club show. And uh, we've got a lot for you this afternoon. And let's get started right now with Cindy Goldberg singing Sentimental Journey. Yeah. Folks, today we're going to be honoring the USO and all that it's done for servicemen and service women all over the world for well over 50 years. And we're gonna be honoring one special person, one entertainer who has traveled more miles and has spent more time entertaining troops overseas than anybody else in history. This man celebrated in 1996 an amazing 60 years with NBC and has been one of the greatest entertainers in the history of show business. Yes, I'm talking about old Ski Knows himself. Yeah, it's just a very Sight of him could bring a smile to your lips. And his, and his golf game was nothing to write home about either. But he had a tremendous way with people, and I tell you, he could be so funny, so clever. Keep on talking. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. Dancing girls on our air at Savannah USO Club show. Well, there's another real important part of the USO shows, and that was the comics. Some of the greatest comics in the world got their start in the USO, entertaining the troops. And I'd like to bring back, as my part of the show, I'd like to bring back one of those comics now. He recently passed away, uh, but uh, gonna live on for the next few minutes here. Please welcome Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, forget about it, forget about it. Hey, I can't get no respect. Hey, hey, hey. Well, at least we got a good crowd tonight. Hey, I could use a good crowd. Hey, because I recently looked at my family tree and found out I was the sap. <laughs> hey, that's right, boy. <laughs> You're kidding me. Hey, hey, hey. Boy, I, I tell you, I come from a dumb family, too. Hey, my great-great-uncle, during the Civil War, he fought for the West. <laughs> hey, wow. Uh, going over these jokes here, all right. <laughs> yeah, hey, when I was born, boy, wasn't I an ugly kid. I was so ugly when I was born, the doctor slapped my mother. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Hey, and boy, did I have trouble as a kid. You know, I tried to play with the yo-yo, never came back. <laughs> hey, my parents used me as a poster boy for birth control, for God's sake. Hey, any time my old man wanted sex, my mother would show him a picture of me to discourage him. <laughs> Hey, I can't, I can't get no respect. Hey, even my cat. You know, I play in the sandbox as a kid. My cat kept covering me, covering me up. Hey. Hey. At one time, I uh, when I started first started to learn to walk, my old man tripped me. That's how bad I was. Yeah, I wanted to learn to do ice skating. Right? Hey, forget about it. I wanted to ice skate. My old man said, "Why don't you wait till it's warmer?" <laughs> What? What kind of a childhood that I had? Hey, forget about it. Because, hey, <laughs> you know, I mean, I tell you, I even got kidnapped as a kid. And my parents got a phone call and said, we want $5,000 or you're going to see your son again. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad that was. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad that was. Hey, and finally, you know, when I did get a date, boy, that was tough. One, one, one time I got a call and this girl says, hey, come on over. There's nobody home. I went over, there was nobody home. <laughs> and when I finally did get a woman to make love to me, yeah, you know, we're making love, she starts crying. I say, what's the matter? You gotta hate yourself in the morning? She says, no, I hate myself now. <laughs> hey. Well, folks, I gotta tell you, hey, listen, I got married and everything changed. You know, my wife and I had 20 happy years, and then we met. <laughs> hey, what a wife like, hey, forget about it. You're kidding me? 
bad at my wife. Hey, you know, I was in the bar the other day, and a bartender comes over, and I was kind of low thinking about my wife, and I, he says, well, you have. And I say, surprise me. So he showed me a naked picture of my wife. <laughs> Forget about it. You know, I'm coming home the other day, and I see a guy running down the street naked. I say, hey, what are you, what are you doing that for? He says, because you came home early. <laughs> Ah, ah. <laughs> Forget about it. Hey, just the other day, I come home, my wife is standing in the front door wearing the sexy negligee. Trouble is, she was coming home at the time. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, what a wife I got. You know, my wife will kiss the dog, but she won't drink out of the same glass as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, and our dog's no picnic either. I tell you, we call our dog Egypt, because he keeps living, leaving little pyramids all over the house. <laughs> Forget about it. What kind of a dog have I got? You know, his favorite bone is in my leg. <laughs> hey, forget about it. The other, the other day, he's, trying, he's standing at the door barking. He doesn't want to go out. He wants me to leave. <laughs> I can't get no respect from, from no one. Hey, you know, the other day I went to the dentist. I said, doctor, listen, my teeth are yellow. And he says, well, why don't you wear a brown necktie? <laughs> Forget about it. I can't get no respect. Just the other day, the Surgeon General offered me a cigarette. Hey! I went to a hooker, she told me she had a headache. <laughs> yeah, forget about it, forget about it. Yeah, it's tough. And my doctor, you know, my doctor, I can't know. Dr. Vinnie Boombots? Remember my doctor, Vinnie Boombots? Hey! I can't get no respect from him. The other day I said, Doctor, what's the matter with me? Every time I look in the mirror, I feel like throwing up. And the doctor says, Well, I don't know what else is wrong with you, but your eyesight's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I said to the doctor, I mean, I can't get no sympathy neither. I said, Doctor, I was feeling low, so I took a whole bottle of sleeping pills. He says, Well, why don't you have a few drinks and get some rest? <laughs> That's my doctor. I can't get no respect. You know, my doctor recently treated six cases. He had six cases of VD in his office. He's feeling better now. <laughs> hey, and I can't even get no respect for my kids. My, my kid was acting up, and I said, you know, someday you'll have kids of your own. And he says, so will you. <laughs> Hey, well listen, folks, that's enough out of me. Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Boy, great show, huh? You other folks enjoying yourselves? Bring the USO and the Savannah Club. But you know, I have a question for you folks. How many of you have ever been on a cruise? Oh, well, look at all those hands go up. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. You know, what I like about the cruises is that you can eat and eat and eat. You know, they say you can eat 14 times a day if you're quick <laughs> on the ship. But you know, it's funny, I mean, when you get on the ship, sometimes things are very strange. Sometimes the people get disoriented. They don't know what they're doing or where, you know, what's going on because they're in a strange place. Like, for example, on my last cruise, this lady comes up to me and she says, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of lost here. Tell me, do these stairs go both up and down? <laughs> This actually happened, on the, happened to me on the Staten Dom recently. The lady came up to me the first night of the cruise and said, Excuse me, which elevators go down and which go up? And I said, These over here go down, ma'am, and these over here go up. And sure enough, they came that way a couple of seconds later. And she goes, Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was actually, I was on a bridge tour on the, on the ship once, and the guy was telling the staff captain, he said, You know, this ship is so large, and this little wheel is so small. Tell me, do you steer the entire ship from here? No, we just steer the front half from here, sir. And finally, uh, sometimes uh, you know, people get confused by all the beautiful colored lights. They see all these colored lights and all the lights in the cabins. And one guy asked me, tell me, does the ship have its own electrical power? No, we just pull an extension cord in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> drag it all over the Caribbean. <laughs> all right, well, folks, now it's time for some good old country music. Please bring up Shirley, Sonny, and Paul. Bye. 
that would do, I to please. Oh, what those five things can do. Has anybody seen my girl? <laughs> if you think the nutcracker is something you did off the high diving board, you might be a redneck. <laughs> and you might be a redneck if your Salvation Army won't take your mattress when <laughs> you try to donate it. Now, you might be a redneck here. Uh, and you might be a redneck if your entire family sat around waiting for a call from the governor to spare a loved one. You might be a redneck. <laughs> you know, if you offer to give the shirt off your back and the other person doesn't want it, you might be a redneck. Like that. <laughs> If you have your local taxidermist on speed dial, you might be a redneck. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you come back from the dump with more than you took from the, there, you might be a redneck. That's right. You thought, I can see some of you folks may identify. We may have a couple of rednecks here in the audience. I'll tell you that right now. If you keep a can of Raid, the bug spray on the kitchen table, you might be a redneck. <laughs> And if your grandmother has ammo on her Christmas list, <laughs> you might be a redneck. All right, well, let's get back to the music. Here's an old one from many years ago called Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Everybody sings this one. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crowd. So, like I said, I'm going to be doing some Irish jokes, but uh, I, uh, I met Joanne uh, in the, at the Elks Club there recently, and uh, I told her that I was in the uh, cruise business. I, I work with a travel agency, and we, we go on a lot of cruises, which a lot, how many of you folks have been on a, on a cruise uh, recently? All right. Great, great. Well, you can feel the excitement in this room. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's amazing when people are on the ship, they get kind of disoriented and not quite sure uh, what's going on. Like I was on one ship, and this lady comes to me and she says, "Excuse me, Ted, do these stairs go both up and down?" You know, man. They <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. I, I, I just gotten on a ship, a Holland America ship, and uh, the, I just come out of the elevator. And a lady came up to me and she said, Excuse me, which of these elevators go up and which go down? So I said, Ma'am, these over here go up and these go down. He said, Oh, and then they came that way just by chance. He said, Oh, thank you. She <laughs> We're taking a tour of the bridge and. Uh, uh, this guy says, uh, you know this ship, he says to the ca staff captain, he says, you know this ship is so big, and this steering wheel is so small. Tell me, do you steer the entire ship from here? That's <laughs> here uh, just the front half. We, we have another steering wheel for the back half. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Someone did it. Someone translate for one group. Anyway, those are, those are a few of those cruise jokes there. But uh, I'm, I'm also... Uh, going to attempt, even though I'm 100% Polish. And of course, remember, we're going to tell some ethnic jokes tonight, you know, so we're going to have to, like in the good old days, you know, before um, everyone had to be quite so politically correct. So I'm going to attempt to tell Irish jokes with a Polish accent here. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Because, you know, the Irish are very inventive people. I know Audrey's from England, that's, that's uh, fairly close to Ireland, but I know the English and the Irish, they don't get along too well. Uh, but, like I said, the Irish are very inventive. You know, in fact, the Irish invented a new tea bag? Yeah, it's waterproof. So, <laughs> they're very inventive. And uh, Pat and Mike were playing bingo. 
How many of you like to play bingo? Do you enjoy playing bingo? Yeah. All right. Well, they were playing bingo, and the caller says, O42. And Pat says, Michael, you got it. And then the caller says, I-15. Pat says, Michael, you got that one, too. Then the caller says, B-22. And Pat says, Michael, you got that one, too. And Michael says, would you do your own? He says, well, mine's full, so I'm helping you. This is my wild Irish food. Thank you. 